let's talk about a concept that's really important with positioning, messaging, and this is, has less to do with scaling, but more to do with us facing the true value of our worth, which is what kind of return can we give to a client, right? Once we figure this out and we understand the numbers, then our clients can understand the numbers. And once the clients can understand the numbers, you can easily justify your price, right? If you pick a number out of thin, thin air and don't understand why that number makes sense to your client or you can't articulate it very well, what do you think that client is going to think about the number that you chose? It's just arbitrary, right? Like, why that number? Why not a different number? Why not a smaller number? It's usually what they say, right? So, so what is everybody else out there in the marketplace doing, guys? They're, what they're doing is, I call it the yellow pages salesman tactic, right? They come in and they go, I think you need this because it's what I have to sell. So I own a marketing company and blogging works. I think you should have it. Here's the price. How compelling is that to a business owner, small business owner? It's not, right? So, so what's the difference, right? What are we selling that the Yellow Pages salesman is not? Anybody? Growth results. An outcome. An outcome. Yeah. So, oh wait, is this is this is not the right pen. Um, glad I didn't make that mistake. All right. So they're they're selling an activity. See how much better my handwriting gets when I'm not forced to crouch <laughs> we are selling an outcome right so or results that's what you want so what is an activity right commodity. it's commodity it's a low price service that you can find just about anywhere like the best example I have of this is like when GoDaddy first started they were just selling domain names now they sell all kinds of crap you guys been through GoDaddy checkout it's like Website protection, website builder, email. email, SEO, like they'll sell you SEO and check out GoDaddy. I mean, how can that be positive ROI experience? They know nothing about you. They're selling it to you automated in the checkout. Like how can they possibly provide value to you? Probably shit people to still buy it though. Totally. No, a bunch of them do. Because that's the point is that they feel like they, this is exactly what happens. It's like you're fries with that model. Yeah. It's like. Check that box off. I'm in the yellow pages for the next year. Right? And the business owner in their mind, they go, that's done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> right? It's a lie, but they feel decent about it, most of them. Right? So SEO at checkout with GoDaddy. Great. Um, you know, I bought this, like, gym website builder thing and they have these templated newsletter emails that will really build trust with my community. You know? Um, emails, uh, newsletters. Can I share some of the virtuals really quick? Yeah. So Julian's currently at three and a half a month and by September he wants to be at 20. Okay. And by February of next year he wants to be at 50. Right. He charges 15 a month. Okay. Which means <laughs> Adam uh, is at zero right now. He wants to be at 20k a month by the end of the year. Okay. Currently charges 15 a month. Okay. Tristan is at 6k now. Uh, he wants to be at 50k a month by December 31st, so the end of the year. He currently charges 1k a month. Okay. Uh, Hugo is at zero now. He wants to be at 15k uh, by December, and 30k by June of next year. He charges. 1500 a month, which equals, he needs 10 clients by December, 20 by June. And then, uh, oh, Julian added that he needs uh, 14. Clients. Okay, 14 clients. Yeah. Got it. That's really all right. Okay, great. Cool. So, oh, wait, Toby just posted. No. Toby is at zero now. He wants to be at 20K uh, by December, and he's charging 15 a month, so he needs 14 new clients. 14 new clients, okay. So similar range. Yeah. Okay. Good. Sure. Go ahead. So, what are we selling, guys? Results, right? An outcome. You're onto it. What? What are examples of results? Memberships. Hmm. Memberships. Memberships for a gym, right? 
So customers, right? Not leads, but profit. Profit. What else? Retention. Or what well, goes along with, uh, I guess, a conversions process. Because the thing is, you may, there's a couple different ways you can extract profit. Either you can do it through you know, sales process on the front end or with, you know, additional services retention on the back end and then increase the average re you know, revenue per customer. Et okay. So upsells and retention. Contracts. So it's whether it's a listing contract or the services contract or whatever. That would be a... It, we would... Per a signed contract? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like a sign, like a listing for them. Or okay, got it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Contracts is broader for the Okay, so agreement. Right. Okay. So it's different for different niches, obviously. Right. But let me tell you guys the easiest way to think about this. Um, most people who sell activity, they just state a price and it usually has to be low to get a yes. That's how they get a yes. Right. So this service looks like this low price, low um, commitment. Right. And it that inherently gives low value. A lot of people are okay with just the activity. That's just the way the marketplace is with this kind of stuff, right? With results, the easiest way to, to sell results is to sell Why, Rob, I would love 50 new memberships. Great. Well, what do you charge, right? So this equals like, you know, the upfront money. So this is just like X dollars, right? Um, awesome. So 50 memberships times your monthly rate of, let's just say, 100 bucks. Where are we at? It's like five grand, right? So that's not bad. Well, do you charge an initiation fee? Yeah. Let's just start using some numbers. 50 times 100. Whoops, 5K. <clears throat> Do you charge an initiation fee? Yeah, I charge $100. OK, so 50 times $100, again, same thing, equals another 5K. Great, so now we're at 10K. So that's just for month one, right? That's what they collect in month one. Awesome. And Mr. Business Owner, how many months on average do you remember stay? Well, I think it's about it's about a year, Rob. Let's just but let's to be safe, let's use ten months. Okay. 
So months 2 through 10, 50 times 100, right? So that's 5K times 9, 45K. Right? Everybody with me so far? Really simple math. This is arithmetic. When we, when we approach our clients, we always, always, always ask them this. We ask them in the application. We talk with them about it on the phone. We use the inputs that they give us. We don't try to dictate and tell them like what the number should be on the phone. We just take it all at face value and start punching this in. Well, Mr. Client, if I could bring you the 50 memberships that you were looking for, you stand to gain 10 grand in month one and another 45 grand in months two through two through 10, right? And we're being pretty conservative here. Is that right? Well, yeah, that sounds, when you really add it up like that, Rob, that sounds like a lot higher than I thought. Well, yeah. But the numbers that you gave me, those are true and right numbers, right? Yeah, th those are true and right, okay? So, so this is 10K, and this is um, 45K. So, so Mr. Business Owner, I have a very simple business proposition for you. We don't say this in the call, but this is what I'm explaining to you guys. This is like caveman stuff, right? If I could service your business and bring you those 50, if I could bring you 50K, um, excuse me, 50 new members for three months in a row, would you agree that if I just did that for one month, that paying $5,000 would be worth it? Again, you're gonna bring in 10K in the first month, so you're gonna net 5K in the first month. You pay us 5K, you're gonna make 5K on top of that. And you stand to gain $45,000 in recurring revenue over the next 10 months, or nine, nine remaining months, right? So would you agree that just month one's return would be worth it for 5K? Like, there is no answer except for yes. <laughs> you understand? And since it's a three-month program, if we brought you two more months of that, you can basically triple those numbers. So for five grand, we could bring in 30K in month one revenues. And what is that? 135K in back-end revenue. Would it be worth it to your business to invest in a program that got you 50, 50 new memberships in a month? Well, yeah, that sounds awesome. But how, do you, how are you going to do it? I'm so glad you asked. How many contacts do you have in your database, sir? <laughs> well, like 10,000. OK. Inside, I'm going like, yes! Right? <laughs> um, when was the last time you marketed to them? Like, sent an email or a text message or anything? Oh, like, well, like probably never. Okay. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so if, if that happens, that's great because, you know, all we have to do is do the math backwards to show them, like, if it really came down to it, how we arrive at this stuff, and it's all based on data, and it's all true. So, let me explain to you what I mean by that. Is everybody okay with that screen? I'm gonna. I'm gonna erase this. Everybody good with that? Going bye-bye? So guys, one of the benefits of us having hundreds and hundreds of clients is we know what the average numbers are and what the goal numbers, the KPIs we call them, key performance indicators. We know what the KPIs should be for our clients at each step of the game. So if we bring in 100 leads from, from Facebook, we did this exercise with Evan and Xavier, and they're, they're still undercharging, but they were way undercharging before, and I'm about to explain to you why. And we, we are undercharging. So 100 leads, right? We know that when 100 leads come through um, from Facebook ads that, well, let me ask you happen. What is our average uh, appointment booking ratio from 100 leads in Facebook ads when we do that? 70%. So we can get 70% of the people who come through Facebook ads to book an appointment. How do you do that? Through our text nurturing sequence. Okay. The one that you have access to. Oh. oh, oh, oh. 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 You got a little excited, didn't you? <laughs> All right. 
And then Hapwan, what kind of show ratio can we expect from 70 appointments approximately? Usually 70 to 80. Okay. Usually I'd say out of 150 will show up overall because 70 times 70 is 49. Sorry, I was getting it. Okay, so 70 percent from that step to that step. So 49 shows. Right? Is that right? Okay. So if we can get 49 shows, what's our average client closing rate? I know it varies, but let's go really conservative. Really conservative. Really at conservative. The beginning. Most of them go from about 10 up to in between 30 and 40 in their first month. And okay. The good ones get up to 50 by you know the end of the three months. Okay. So. So what do we want to use here to be super conservative? A totally makeable number. Give me one number. 35. 35, okay. So 35% close ratio, right? So what is 49 times 35% is the question? Anybody? 18. 18? That's 18 new members, right? This is way conservative, by, by the way, guys. Like, we have clients who have an 80% close rate from this, but we, we want to be like sure that we can do this, right? We want to be confident that we can deliver, right? Because that's better. We don't want to over-promise and under-deliver. We want to under-promise and over-deliver. So let's just say that it's this. These are conservative numbers. So 18 new members, well, they, they want 50, right? So. All we have to do is adjust the amount of leads that we get to get these 18 leads. So for every 100 leads we get, we can expect 18 new memberships. So how many new Facebook leads do we need to get those 50 new desires? 50 divided by 18 <coughs> times 100. What's the 300? 277. 277. Well, 278 leads. 278 leads equals 50 new memberships. You guys see where I'm going with this? Well, how much do Facebook leads cost? They cost between five and 10 bucks a lead on average with our campaigns. So 10 bucks times 278 is um, 2780. So 5,000, well, what is that? Jeez. What's 2780 times 2 have? Well, that would be a $20 cost per lead. Cut it in oh, half. Oh, sorry. You're right. No, it's 10. No, it's still nice. You're right. 2780? Yeah. Divided by 2. $5 cost per lead would be 1390. There we go. So this is our hard cost, right? Let's get that to Facebook. This is our ad spend. How often is it above 10 bucks? Just out of curiosity. I mean, five to ten is an average range. Like right. If we're paying to twenty to thirty, like our team is working on optimizing it. We have some campaigns that are sub five dollars. Right. Because so. I, I guess, like in the Cairo niche, there's there's some. I mean, else Cairo Auto, it can be pretty significantly higher than that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, like even twenty, thirty, forty. I've seen it as high as a hundred, but I mean, it depends on the client. I mean, cost totally. acquisition. You know, it really it 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 ranges quite a bit. But right. You know, I guess one thing that I do to try to combat that just in case is go with an arbitrarily high number because the number still usually makes sense even if you doubled what the cost would have been. They do. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. But we could double, I'll show you why if we doubled that, it would still make sense, like you're of saying. Of course. Yeah. I know it does. You know, so, so guys, again, we're talking about, remember this math over here? Pretty darn good. Over $100,000 in annualized revenue plus 30K up front. It, you know, over the first three months. Remember that number? All we have to do is add 5K to this and ask them, does 77, so 5K for our fee, plus 2780 on the high end, right? Equals 7780 to get Thirty K plus one thirty five K. 
35, 30K comes month one, month two, month three. 135K comes over the next nine months, respectively. Making sense so far? Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Business Owner, I have a value proposition for you. If you paid me 77.80 for the next three months for me to get you 50 new members per month, and that would net you about 30K up front plus 135K in recurring revenue, would you take that deal? Again, the answer should be all fucking day long, yeah. right? Anybody like who wouldn't take that deal? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> they find they'd find it quick, right? Yeah. Oh, I got a brother who can loan me money, sell his trailer. <laughs> you think that's going to pay fifteen thousand to make two seventy? Like, can you can I double that and get double that? Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes you'd, you'd hit um, you had a limit because it's. You know, like for some gyms, for a smaller studio, it'd be tough to get to spend like three grand a month effectively. But what's the other asset that we have here that I haven't even mentioned yet? Database. Database reactivation. So we can hit that sucker too to get more leads, right? So the paid traffic is the harder one because there's ad spend and it depends on how many leads want to respond in Facebook. And like Casey said, the variables, sometimes it can be very high just for a specific location, a specific market. Sometimes that happens, right? But if they have a database, we can use that to supplement this to either increase their lead volume even farther or cut the cost per acquisition down. So if they net average out, I mean, again, some of our clients never even have to, we don't even have to do this math with them because they have no ad spend cost. We just hit their database, get their members to do some referrals, and they're in business. Does that make sense? So, so I got a question with so, database reactivation. You said in month one, you would go after their, their database that has not current clients or whatever. Yeah. Month two, you go after existing clients to try to get referrals. Right. And then month three, what happened? What well, it's not always like that. That's just okay. a common scenario. Okay. Um, if they have a big enough database, we'll keep doing that initial reactivation until it runs out. Um, Usually we do the buddy pass second because it's a much smaller list. Mm -hmm. So like, again, with bigger database clients, we don't even get to the buddy pass mm -hmm. or the Facebook ads mm -hmm. or the bigger items that are in phase six. <laughs> right. You know, we just never get there because the lowest hanging fruit is what they're working on. And when you do this so, database, isn't that all kind of at once? Like they'll, they'll get a lot of them all at the same time? Yeah, but, so we'll split it up though. Oh, so okay. we'll only text like 250 to 1,000 people a week. Oh, gosh. We already gosh. covered this, Casey. You were working on something I, else. I think she does <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, seriously, I mean, so again, we work it backwards. We say, what size is your database? Well, let's go after that first. Doesn't that make sense? And if they say no, we explain to them why, but they always say yes, right? So I, I skipped ahead a little bit because I wanted to show you the worst case scenario. We can always go buy traffic to get the result that we want. So, although I understand the question, what is the recommended ad spend that you're, you tell your clients? That's kind of like what a rookie would ask because once you understand this, you should be asking them how many memberships do you want? Great, this is what it should cost you. Does that make sense? You see the difference there? When we're selling money, that's the question to ask. How, what kind of result do you want first? Remember, we provide memberships on demand, right? So we don't even talk about managing their ads in any of our marketing or copy. We don't really even talk about Facebook ads. Does that make sense? So to keep that congruency and to really effectively serve your clients, guys, this is what you have to understand is the value of what you're bringing. You know, we've got, um, who's the nine round guy that got up to 30 something memberships Jeff Rich. Is that Jeff Rich? Jeff Yeah. So we had one guy who. Minnesota, yeah. Sounds like Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. This guy went from nothing to like doing 30 something. I don't even remember what the number is, but he, he keeps posting in our group. Like 30, like 38 or something. 38. He's at like 38 memberships this month. You know? So the math looks real good there, right? Uh, nine round, they charge between 119 and 149, and I think their initiation fee is 149. So it's even better than this. See what I mean? So guys, when we're talking to our clients, like we have to become, we have to come from a position where we understand this about what we can deliver to them. That determines the pricing that we give to them. 
and that justifies the selling money part. Does that make sense? One second, and then I'll take it. So what we're looking for here is a at least a 10 to 1 return on money overall. If they can pay their bill to us off and the ad spend before the end of the 30 days, before they even get their credit card statement, that's ideal. Because why? Cash flow. They basically got a service for free. They performed alchemy. They never really took money out of their pocket, did they? If they put 10 grand in their bank account and five grand on the credit card and the bill came 30 days later for their credit card and they paid the whole thing off and they still had $5,000 left, how much money left their account? Nothing. No. Five grand got put into their account. Make sense? Yeah. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Okay. Math is tough. I know. I'm the worst at it. <laughs> but guys, you have to understand how important this concept is, right? So they paid for everything based with the month one profits. Now, like it, it, in the obviously when it comes to fitness, you are getting a recurring business, you know, revenue stream kind of scenario where you could get very large sums, you know, in, in certain periods of time. But like for example, with chiropractors, dentists, things like that, you know, you have to more or less focus on um, lifetime value because and it's estimated kind of that scenario. So how would you adapt, I guess, your existing process based on lifetime versus? You just ask them what the lifetime value is and you plug those yeah. numbers in. Very simple answer. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then and then if you don't hear what you know is in the actual real range, right. then you ask them about it yeah. because sometimes they'll lie or they just don't know. But also, it isn't technically a scenario where they're going to get that money back in the first month, though. Potentially, that's one of the I think. I don't really ever have that as a huge problem, but I also do know that it, it may be a little bit different in that regard because. You know, even though they put on the credit card, they may not get all that revenue. Actually, they're not going to most of the time, you know, within that first month. Who is it? Well, Carol's. chiropractors. Really? Yeah, because, awesome. I mean, some of, the, some of the care plans take, you know, six weeks, sometimes six months. So, And then they have maintenance plans, and so, like, a lot of that revenue can be on the tail end, you know, after the first six months or so. Well, what do they collect within the first 30 days, typically, for a care plan? Um, it depends. I mean, some of them up front. It's, if it's a cash practice, you know, also there's differences if they have insurance, for example, or right. if they have, like, more... Uh, complex stuff like upper cervical chiropractors or if it's like, you know, there's so many different like variables within that world that it kind of becomes, also even, even auto too, like automotive, you know, you might get 2,500 bucks including, you know, gross plus m &I income or whatever, um, but then also like service revenue, what does that look like? Referrals. Or when they be trading a car and you get revenue off selling that car and then they buy another right. car, you know, so because of that, you know, there's chunks of revenue that happen in chunks like real estate as well. Um, so, so here's what you have to do. You have to be okay with the averages. Of course. Because the average is like yeah. taking all those things into account. Right. Or you sudden niche down and go, I'm just talking about this specific, a right. cash practice who collects at least 500 bucks up front for a care package right. in the first three days. In the first month, that it's a, it's a wash cost-wise, yeah. I yeah. That. So, but you have to decide how to simplify that for them because what you just did is the way they think. Mm -hmm. Well, what about this? And what about that? And what about this flying scenario over here? And that was one person, but that doesn't matter. That should skew the whole thing. Like, no. I'm fucking confused. <laughs> and you I know? don't usually, by the way. I'm just... Uh, you don't? <laughs> but that, so this is my point. Yeah. I work with chiropractors. So you confused me. This yeah. So, guys, you, you have to get this down to, and use, like, when you ask them about this, they'll, like, if you talk to 10 people during a strategy session, like a sales call, and you ask them 10 times in a row, and you ask the same question, they'll say it back in the way that they want to understand it, unless they do that. But if you go, try again, what's the average? So you listen to them, but you kind of go, throw it away, right? Try again, what's the average within the first 30 days? All right, 500 bucks. And then they usually have like a six month care plan, so it's like 500 bucks a month after that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Feel good about that? Is that pretty true? Yeah, that's about average. There's some higher, some lower, but that's about right. Great, let's use that. The key there is that they gave you that information and you know for it to be fairly true. Right, yeah. Like you don't want it swinging wildly one way or the other, but if they're using those numbers to plug into here, mm -hmm. until you find out further, it's probably true. Yeah. Like unless you find out otherwise later. Yeah. So don't lie, but if you're using the information that they're giving to you and you know for it to be fairly true, just plug it in. Because that's the simplest way for them to understand the concept. Mm -hmm. Conceptually, you and I know that if they, dentist does upsells and referrals and all that stuff forever, it will pay off in the long run. Right. But they have to keep doing this month after month and it'll have a compounding effect. Right. So I feel completely fine resting my head down at night knowing that if they pick the number and it's a little bit askew, but I sold the concept and they bought in, right. I'm fine with that. 
because it's going to vary maybe a little one way or the other, but not much. You see what I mean? Yeah. So that's how you fix that. And the point of this is to provide glare. We don't go through all of this with them, by the way, guys. We <laughs> simplify it down very, very in a very compact format. And Ryan's going to tell you exactly what he says tomorrow. But if someone says, oh, is, there's no way that's worth it, he goes, really? Tell me why. And then their math is wrong. And he goes, well, actually, that number right there is not true at all. Like, or at least people in our program aren't getting that number. So if you're closing 3% of people that come in at your place, let's fix that. There's people who are closing 83%, and they're doing, getting from 13% to 83 or 86% within a week in our program. Within a week. So I can help you with that, right? But that's not the way it has to be. Or if they go, well, I don't believe it can do that, then we just show them data. Well, did you see the case study with Chris and Matt Judy? They tripled their membership, now they're opening a second location. They have a facility that looks just like yours. See what I'm saying? So you can back this up. Guys, this is powerful. You, this is mostly for you to understand now, so you understand how to price and package your services, so you can be confident in delivering the value that they're asking for. So two main takeaways here so far. Thing one is do the math logic moving backwards. Get used to doing this fast. If you guys know these ratios, you can calculate it super quick. Ryan does it on the call with a pen and a paper and a calculator, right? So he'll just go, okay, you want 50 new members? Let's do this backwards, right? And he'll calculate based on their database with the averages we know. And then he'll go, okay, you probably need this many Facebook leads approximate, and I'm going high on all the numbers. And we can probably use your database to get a bunch of these people in for free, about half of them. That's usually how it works out to get you those 50 new memberships a month. <coughs> and after that, they either go, whoa, dude, never thought about it like that. Or they go, I kind of don't believe you. Like, can you show me how this is possible and true? And so he either explains this to them loosely or he points them to a case study where someone who looks just like them did it. Does that make sense? Now, if you've got like existing retainers set up with existing clients at like the fifteen hundred two thousand dollar price point, and you wanted to add database reactivation as an additional service to increase your retainer revenues and also help them out, et cetera, kind of a thing, how would you price that out? So we've never done it that way, but that's always been together, right? Mm -hmm. For you, yeah. But so that's why. Not with that particular piece, but I right. just dealt with this with a client where I was going to add something, and I right. got a little pushback. So he's like, "Am I paying this?" I mean, right. It's a good question. I haven't really thought you have any options yet. Like either. Additional, like, yeah. Right. Well, what you can do is split these two out then. You can do this, one round of this with them, and chances are you're undercharged. Like, you're not charging five grand for your service. You're charging, well, so you're charging 1500 a month? 1500 That's pretty good. Do you charge a setup fee? No. No. So, if they're getting numbers like this, in a return for the Facebook ads mm -hmm. that you're providing and you know they're getting the desired result, right. then I would say do the database reactivation math separately. As like a separate retainer, but so not necessarily an add-on to like well, do the, What I'm saying is do the yeah. math first, see what kind of outcome you can provide to them. Okay. And then go for the 10 to one minimum ROI rule. Awesome. Gotcha. Our kills mine. Because like, you know, R5K is nothing compared to you know, they're getting a six to one return in the first three months. That's over, over three months though, the fact that, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Six K return in over the first three months and they're covering the full investment in the first month. They're getting a two to one return in the first month. It's crazy good. And then if you calculate this ROI, I don't even know what that is. That's um, seven plus 20, so it's 27 X return in addition to the six. So that's, how was that, 33? Right. So we could triple our prices and justify it very easily, right? <clears throat> so, right yeah. so I think I think if anything, it just it makes you have to kind of run the math, I guess, and figure that out. Because the thing is, you know, even if we're at fifteen hundred to two thousand a month, but we have no hard costs, like skip there's going to be two hundred bucks a month kind of kind of scenario. Yeah. You would have to be able to at least make margin on it. So I imagine it would have to be at least five hundred to seven fifty if you're to add that on top of that mm -hmm. um, to justify. But yeah. it sounds like ROIs are regardless. So I mean. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's two things they're going to care about, the return on investment overall, and then how fast can I recoup my initial investment to pay you. Right. So a thousand bucks would be a no-brainer for most of these people That's because... A thousand would far kill. Yeah. Because you do that. Yeah. Mm, okay. Like, run the math on a thousand bucks return on investment for a database of, what does he have? 20,000. Stupid. Right. So we can't 
we don't have time to do everybody's math here today, but that's the skill. What you just talked about, get a huge whiteboard or you know whatever your favorite thing is and map it out, right? Use, <coughs> if you guys don't know what these numbers are, we have training videos in there where I walk through what our averages are, right? In the portal, it's in there right now. And you can use these for the conversion rates for, because like a lot of you haven't, have never done a Scipio campaign to get that show rate up to where it, you know, we expect it to be, right? That, that's for your database or for your Facebook That's for Facebook ads. Yeah. It varies, 70. but I mean, sometimes we get up to 90. It's crazy. Just depends on how long. Um, probably, anything above 50 with Kairos is good. It's really good, yeah. What do you count as a show? A uh, walk-in. As appointment? A walk-in. Okay. Show, okay, a walk-in. Mm -hmm. Or not a walk-in. I guess not a walk-in. Right. Walk-in means they just came in and yeah. 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 Scheduled show. Yeah. That makes, makes sense. So, so guys, do this for database reactivation. Do this for um, for Facebook ads. Um, what I like to do is a lot of times our clients they don't have huge databases. Like a lot of them have like a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, something like that. It's kind of more the average, the, the norm when they come into our program. So that's not a lot to keep them busy for like three months. So we might go through that in the first month, six weeks, something like that. So we have to figure out how many Facebook ads add leads they need to get them out of numbers that they want. Does that make sense? <coughs> so that's always, you know, what's up? Battery? Yeah, that's what oh, I'm cool. yeah. <coughs> Sorry. No worries. Oh, no, you still on? Okay. That's not the issue then. That okay. Thank you. Oh, no worries. <coughs> I also found, and like, I know Ryan's going to go over with us, <coughs> of like the couple I've been on so far. Um, like I found like one of the guys that closed, he later told me, he's like, nobody ever asked me these questions before. Like totally. everybody else seems to be jumping on calls and like, ooh, like our Facebook strategy is this and it's better than everybody else. And it's like, oh, nobody, it's kind of like nobody's asking them these questions. Yeah. So he told me, I came off like really professional and he said, I really feel like you knew what you were talking about and knew what you were doing because you literally like did all this. <clears throat> so it's just interesting. It presents yeah. you in like a more higher level tier than everybody else out there. Yeah, exactly. So when you guys know these numbers and you, they say a number and you're like, yeah, that's about what I see out there in the marketplace too. Yeah, that's about what I see when I, you know, amongst all our clients, a couple hundred clients too. You know, they're like, oh, okay, that's good. Or if they're like, and then they, it's funny because they'll, they'll like, on the next question, sometimes they'll go, so is that number about average too? <laughs> Am I low on that one? Like, what should I be doing? You know, like they, all of a sudden they get all self-conscious and the positioning is switched though because now they view Grant as what? The authority, the advisor, the person that can help me, not the yellow pages salesman, not the person that's just trying to sell me whatever they have to sell because they want to sell me on it. See how different that is? This is like massive for your positioning. It's good for your messaging and your, and your, um, positioning statement, like the value that you're going to put out there in the marketing marketplace. But during a sales call, you know, when they actually go, well, I'm going to talk on the phone and see how this guy sounds like, I'm going to show him, right? And then Grant gets a comment like that by the end of the call. It's like, what a breath of fresh air. I like that guy, <laughs> right? Wasn't expecting that. But when you come in with this level of confidence with the math, like Ryan will sit there and bludgeon people like, not in a bad way, in a good way, but he will bludgeon people on the math because a lot of times they don't know their numbers, right? A lot of gym owners especially, they are kind of flying by the seat of their pants, not very organized sometimes. They may have re just recently gotten a CRM. It's pretty common, you know? Um, and so when Ryan's asking them these questions, they get a little defensive and they're like, you know, I just don't know, man, I'm sorry. And they get a little bit defensive sometimes. A lot of times. A lot of times. And Happen knows. And what Ryan and Happen will do is work really hard. To, so, like, instead of pulling the knife, you know, the knife's a little bit in the gut, instead of pulling it back out and being their friend, we're digging it in because this is the exact reason why their business is struggling. You understand? So, they might be challenging you on it and they might be defensive about it, but their biggest objection, well, the numbers don't matter, will also be their biggest reason for signing up with you guys and getting the help that they need. Does that make sense? So think about that because when you're talking about numbers with people, typically numbers are um, 
are challenging for most business owners because they've stuck their head in the sand about it for too long. You guys ever watch like The Profit or any of those shows where the business guy goes in and saves the business? You see this live on camera when they start digging in the numbers, they always are like, oh, right? They're just like, oh, he's talking to my financial guy. Oh, he's pulling a QuickBooks report, you know? Or, oh, he's talking to the sales guy. Damn it. I thought I would skip that part, <laughs> right? And it never fails. Like, before he writes the check, it's always based off of what? The numbers, right? So for us to be talking about this with them, and for us, this is the, you know, the part of the conversation where Grant's becoming a little bit of the therapist, like, we're part-time therapists sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, you get kind of deep with someone real fast because you're taking the time to ask them these questions and they're not used to that at all. So it's very powerful, but also very like vulnerable for them to be sharing this information with you. Sometimes we talk to folks and they haven't even shared these numbers with their spouse or their business partner. And so it's a foreign concept of them to even be chatting about it with, with them. Some of you guys got nervous when I asked you your numbers. Your body language changed. Your eye contact changed, you know. I used to be really embarrassed to talk about my numbers. Even when my agency had good numbers, I was like, if someone asked about my profit, shizer, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so, so it's a powerful exercise, but you guys need to be stronger than your clients with this concept. That's why it's a good idea to evaluate your numbers too. Right, because when you're confident and strong with your numbers and where you're going, and it's easy to talk about it or easier, guess what happens when you're on a sales call and you're asking your client to do the same? With you? <laughs> right, they can hear it in your voice. Like, oh, this is a little uncomfortable, but Grant sounds confident that he can help me with this because he's a good therapist. <laughs> that makes sense. So. Yeah, I just got a quick one. So. Obviously, we, we all get these numbers, but when I look at the conversion rates of 70%, 70%, 35%, 35%, I that from client to client, those are different, and then that probably leads to maybe a, a wide range in, in cost per new member. So it looks like mm -hmm. the numbers work out to like $20 to $50 to acquire a new member. Is that generally what you see across clients, or is there a pretty big range? It, it does range, but here's the thing. Is in our program, if our clients are showing up to live calls, we can easily identify at which step they're falling off yeah because what will typically happen is this number or this number is pretty good it's like acceptable um, but not both right so they'll like this will be terrible or that'll be terrible and we'll be like well what are you doing or saying or not doing or not saying at this step and they'll tell us and we'll go well that's not what's in our system <laughs> every time almost if Nadine were here we should, she'd be cracking up well why didn't you do what's already proven and proven to work well and just plug that in because it works and that can get you 70%. They're like, oh, well, I thought about that. That's the creative thing. And you said oh, you're getting these numbers from a move form, like they're telling you the show rate and the close rate specifically? The numbers that I'm telling, I'm telling you that this is what our system can generate. So when we're calculating our return on investment with the client, we know that this is a goal that we can hit when they enter our program. Mm -hmm. When they're saying that they have 100 members now and they want to get to 200 and their close rate is 80%, and we ask them how many leads they got last month and how many of them they closed, there's often incongruencies there. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Um, or with simple things, pricing, you ask them pricing, they're like all over the place. Well, we have 25 options. Okay, which one works the best? We're gonna help you with that, you know? So it, it's, it's a lot of that stuff. So what Ryan's trying to do is find the inputs. So we know we can do this. What I'm showing you is what we know that we can do. Right. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. When Ryan asks them about their numbers, he's asking them where they're at, where they want to be. It's all the numbers I just asked you there. What are you charging? How are you going to get there? And he's going to teach you all this verbatim tomorrow. So this is just for us because we know we can do all this, and this is what our value and worth is. And this is where they should be if they have the proper systems in place. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's not what they're doing now. <coughs> no, 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 I get that. I'm yeah. just wondering, like, I guess on certain sales calls, you and we'll learn about this tomorrow. But do you walk some clients through this, and with some clients, can you just tell them at face value, "Hey, it costs us around fifty dollars to acquire a new member," and they'll and they'll give you? No, we always walk through their num their current numbers, yeah. and then we tell them what they can expect in our program. So, 
Since they would. Uh, he'll explain this more tomorrow, but where they are now, where they want to be, is and we want to match where they want to be with what our program can deliver, right? So when Ryan's talking to them, he's basically telling them, like, well, you shouldn't be expect 200 new members a month. That's probably pretty out of the question. But getting 30 to 50 is totally feasible, and this is how impactful it can be in your business. Have you sat down to think about how impactful 30 new, to new members every month for the next six months could be in your business? They might say yes or no, but he talks about it anyway. <laughs> to make sure they understand, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so we've established that they're here and they want to get to here and we can get them there with our system. He knows that. So if they challenge us on that, he knows how to talk about those numbers. So if he goes, I don't think that, how do people get a 70% close rate? That's impossible, man. I'm getting 10. I don't believe you. Yeah. You know, that's when Ryan goes to this and goes, well, this is how it works. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So you just want to make this thing believable because of our confidence level and what we know our tools can provide and establish where they're at down here and the solution in the middle is our program. So again, to get from where they're at now to where they want to be, we want to bridge that gap with, with our program being the bridge that bridges that gap. Gotcha. Do you ever take on a client that doesn't have a goal? Um, no, we help them establish one on the call, though. Like, if they truly don't know, most of them do know. They're like, I need, like, 20 to 30 a month every month to, like, keep the doors open and do well and make payroll and stuff. They usually know those numbers pretty good, like what they need. Um, it's usually not hard. Would you say so, Happen? They usually know what they want to have, membership-wise, right? Like, they'll, in our WooFoo form, to your point, on our application page, we ask them how many they have now and how many they want to get to. Yeah. We do ask that. Yeah. So guess, you guys talked about the live clients earlier, which obviously is extremely important. Do you guys have certain stipulations? Are you going to go over like things you look for? Like, do you have like deal killers or pay attention? You said they're going to talk about tomorrow, dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I think it's pretty common for people to have goals, and it's less common for them to have a timeline. Right. Like I've talked to people where they're like, oh, I want to get up to this many members and just right. much revenue. I'm like, okay, how, how soon do you want to do that? And they're like, uh. What they know off the bat is they need 200 members a month to be like taking home a good check, paying their people well, like making all their bills, like that kind of thing. 200 but new members a month or just 200? 200, 200 total, total. Okay, like yeah. recurring. And so Happen is right though. They won't know necessarily what it takes to get there or how long they should feasibly get there. They have like no plan. So. Um, so yeah, to be honest, I mean, a lot of the times when we're on the phone with them, we start talking about this stuff and it sounds like unattainable to them mm -hmm. on many levels because a lot of them have been open for like five years mm -hmm. and they've just kind of been at the same level, so. just kind of treading water. Um, so they're like, I've tried everything, man. And they kind of have. So. But they never really committed to any of them or just that they didn't have a plan? And they Depends. Or, so, yeah. I mean, part of the thing that we look for in our, so some of our clients need a certain amount of, like with someone who's less committed but has a crazy good database, like we take that into account. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about that tomorrow with Ryan about our client criteria if you want. Um, but yeah, cool. there are inten there's tangibles and intangibles. I was talking about this with somebody. Who was I talking about that with? Tangibles and, uh, yeah, at lunch, right? Yeah. So, like for example, sometimes we get an application and they appear to be broke, they're not billing very much, they have very low membership count, but they have like a really positive outlook in the comments and stuff in the application. And then we get on the phone where it's very easy to disqualify that person before talking to them. Right. Then we get on the phone and they have all the intangibles that we want in a fantastic client. Sometimes those people end up being our, our best case studies. That makes sense. So the criteria that we need to have though is like Chris and Matt Judy were our first clients. They didn't have anything that we needed, but they made a commitment to getting everything that we needed. So we're like, you need to go get a video done. They're like, can we have it to you by Thursday? We're like, fuck yeah. You know? These guys are like ex-military guys. So they're very good at following instructions and following a system. And then they're like, well, we, don't, we have like a pricing sheet. Do you recommend using a free 10 day pass and switching to membership? We're like, yes, how fast can you get that done? Tomorrow, great. See what I mean? And we just kept knocking them down like that and they got it all done like the first week. So it's not an immediate like 
disqualification if they don't have everything we need, but they need to be willing to get it and they need to be fully committed if they're not, if they don't have all those things. So sometimes the client gets saved a little because <laughs> a guy like Chris who's been open for 10 years and has a database that size, like we knew that he was just going to be able to crush even if he was a little lazy or less committed. The results would have been undeniable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So does that answer your question? Yeah. Good. Any other questions on the math logic stuff? Guys, is this, does this make you feel like you want to raise or lower your prices based on the return on investment we're looking at? <coughs> this kind of thing. Raise. Yeah, my number's too. Yeah. 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 So do the math. If you're not sure, do the math. It will tell you the answer to the story 100% of the time. Okay? So, and if you guys don't know what the averages or the variables are, you can ask us and we'll let you know what we use. There's training videos that are in the portal right now for you and in the Facebook group where I go over this stuff step by step. And I think the replay of when I did it with Xavier and Evan is in there for the med spa niche. Theirs is disgustingly good. It's crazy. Um, so do this, guys. Do it. You can do it for Facebook ads standalone and then for database reactivation standalone. Determine the value and decide what your pricing should be from there. Or you can bundle them together like we do. And the reason why we charge 5800 is because we know that every client who goes in and follows our system will get a return on investment. We want for it to be a good value, and we have the scale to do lots of volume. But we can make it 5 k a month for three months, and we, it, we would probably still be able to sell the, the pants off that thing because we can, we can back it up. Does that make sense? So, so do the math. 